Hello, good day for it is I. I hope we are all doing well. Today I want to talk a little bit about database lookups inside of Halo PSA. I did a video a while ago and there was so much going on and I didn't really drill into database lookups, why you'd want to use them, the power of using them and I will show you a little bit how we use them I suppose so there you go loads of use cases but let's jump straight into it let me jump over to my halo environment and let's talk about them a little bit so I am today inside my test environment so there might be stuff popping up everywhere don't panic about that we're going to focus on database lookups so first of all what do I mean by database lookups and why would you ever want to use them well we use them to basically query information inside of Halo that might not be natively in the area we want it to be in. So what I mean by that, and in this demonstration today, I'm going to start pulling the cost and the price of items from the products catalog onto a ticket body. Now, you can do many things with this. You can have it so you could pull first and last name and append it with something. I know on the trial you might have seen it. Um, I know Joe did something fancy where it will take the company name, append it to the end of a LinkedIn URL to give you a quick way of getting their LinkedIn page. Mileage will vary, of course. But the way we use it, and there's a specific use case we use. Now, I obviously can't show you it in full detail, but as you may know, we're distributors for Halo PSA. So we sell licenses to a certain amount of our customers. And as a part of that, we need to submit that to Halo PSA. The same way you would if you're buying licenses from one of your vendors. So as a part of our process, and I won't go through it all today, but essentially we have a capture form, if you will, and we basically have to select what license we're selling or buying from Halo. Now, you'll see here that I'm selecting item three or item four. It's returning with the result, meaning it's found something, and you'll be noticing here the cost and the price is changing. Now, what's clever about this and the reason we use them is, is because if I just go to item three and call this YouTube item, and we change this recurring price to be uh, 875 and the cost to be 25 and press save what we'll notice is on the ticket is that now it will say YouTube item and those price and cost things will be reflected so what this means for me is if Halo have a price increase on licenses or if they change at all I need to update it in one place in my setup that will update it in all of my systems but also mean through my sales engagements the pricing and the costings will always remain the same you can take this one step further as well, and I will show you this as a part of this demonstration, but we can then also run totals. So what we do is we capture how many licenses people want, what bandings that falls into. We then calculate the cost and pricing automatically on the ticket so we know what our buy and sell margins are. But with all that being said, let's get stuck into a little bit to show you exactly what's going on here. Now, there is a lot of moving pieces to this one, so please make sure you are strapped in. But first of all, how do we do this? How do we select the items on a ticket from our products catalog? Well, that's relatively straightforward. And all we're doing there is a uh, using a dynamic SQL basically and a custom field. So if I go to custom objects, custom fields and scroll all the way down, you will see here I've made a custom field called monthly licenses. Now, what is that doing? And I will put this um, SQL in the description below, but essentially it is selecting the IID as ID. It is sele selecting the iDesk as display from item. And that's basically selecting these two fields from item. We're then joining the generic table on the item table based on I generic equals G generic. I will show this what this means in a minute. But then we're also saying where the default billing period equals two. And I want to order this ascending. Now, what does that mean in English, Connor? Well, essentially what we're doing here is a dynamic list or a dynamic SQL lookup. And what we're essentially doing is we're drilling down into our items table. So if I just pull any of these reports, I think this is actually item, I think, looking at it. I might have hit the jackpot there. There we go, select from item. So we're basically saying, show me the um, iDesk as the description. So this is the description of the product. 
So we'll see in here, we'll have, you know, item YouTube item, we'll have item two, and we're basically drilling down into this report or into the database essentially. So that's the first part. So the first part is um, we have a custom object, a custom field, and we have selecting a product, okay? So we're going into our product catalog and we're selecting a product from that product catalog. Now at this stage, nothing else has really happened. Then what we do is we go down to integrations and we go down to uh, database lookups. Now I'm pretty sure this is on by default and I'm pretty sure you can't turn it off, but if it's not on, or you can turn it off, I lie already. Um, if you go to integrations, type in database, you'll see database lookups. Just make sure you press the plus in the top right hand corner and that will then appear like this. Then click new in the top right hand corner and we're basically going to go through this together now and show you how we build this. So the first thing is we must give this a name. The name can be anything you want, doesn't really matter. It's just what we know when we're looking in our database lookups, what they're all doing. And I've just called this, um, let's call this item lookup, shall we? Then we have a trigger field. So when we change or modify or touch this field, something is then going to happen. So what field is it we want? Now, I'm going to be honest with you, I've had varying mileage using summary of a ticket. And again, summary doesn't typically change, so I would avoid that one. I would try and have it so, you know, when you change a field, this runs. And um, you can also have it at the very bottom here, run this lookup every time the ticket detail screen is opened or an action is submitted. So something is ran on the ticket or the ticket is opened. But in this UK use case, I just want this to literally be when I touch this field or change this field, then I want this to happen. So once we've touched that field or modified it, then we want something to happen. So we then want to use an SQL script or storage procedure once again. And I want to select the recurring cost and the recurring price from the items table where something equals something. Okay. So if I just jump out of here very quickly and I jump back into my reports and I go to this one here, I don't know which one it was. So I'll just write it again. Let's pull up our item table. Sorry, bows away. And we basically want to say, I want to set the recurring cost and price from the item ID of the monthly license we select. So again, if you remember on here, when we go to service desk, we're selecting an item. What I want to do, and we could use a description, but I, you know, I like to use IDs where possible. I want to select the cost and the price from that item. Once I've selected the cost and price from the item, I then want to do something with it. And what I want to do with it is I want to post that information or update that information into two custom fields on the ticket. So what I've done is I've made two custom fields, uh, configuration, custom objects and custom fields. These are about to blow your mind. Uh, we have cost and we have price. And these are just uh, text, anything fields. Now you can use integer until you want to start going down a decimal place route, which I ended up last week and was getting confused. So anything for the most part is fine. And that all culminates into the fact that when I go to a ticket and I select or change the field monthly license, I want to select the cost and price from that custom field monthly license where the ID matches the monthly license and I want to update the cost and price of that item to these custom fields cost and price resulting in the cost and price being mapped here but we could go one step further once again so we could make very 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 quickly a custom field called uh, license quantity like so and this could again we'll just make this an integer just for the time being an integer 
and we could add this CF license quantity to a ticket type. And again, you can add this at an action level or you can add this at a ticket level. It doesn't really matter. So if I now go and add CF license quantity, you will now see on the ticket, if I refresh, we'll now have the monthly licenses and how many of them we have. Now to pull all this together, we then have to update our SQL. And what we want to do is we want to sum the um, recurring cost times this new field we've made. So CF license quantity like so. Now, the good thing about doing these is, is we have a test button at the top, okay? So if I click test now and do this, it will say error, invalid quantity, CF license quantity. Well, that's because we forgot to put in the dollar sign because it's a custom field. It needs to have the dollar in front of it. So we'll test it again. We're going to select another item. And then it will basically shout at us, I knew this was going to happen, and basically say you can't do this because the recurring item cost is not contained within a group or aggregate function. So all I need to do is, again, amend my SQL script, do group by, and I'm actually going to save you a little bit of pain here. I'm going to do item recurring cost and also item recurring price. And again, if we test it again now, it'll say um, we must declare the variable um, CF monthly licenses. Oh, that's my bad. Do you ever read something and go, hang on a minute, this isn't this isn't what this should mean? But there we go. So that SQL is now currently working. Now, although we've done this calculation, this sum, we've not told it to do anything with it. So what I'm just going to do here is say, show me this as total. And earlier, I made a custom field called CF total, which I call total. So what we're doing here with this lookup field is, is we're matching the output of our SQL. So we have cost, price, and total, the descriptions here, cost, price, and total. And we're mapping those to custom fields inside of Halo for cost, price, and total. And these already exist in my instance. The result being, drum roll please. If we now go to a ticket and we say I want a YouTube item, and the customer wants five of these. If I now cycle through this, it will then run the maths. Five times 25 is 125. Five times 34. Let me do that in my head. Five times 34 is indeed 170. So again, this is just a slight indication of how you can start building this out. Um, I would actually have the calculation in my environment run on the license quantity changing so again we can go ahead and we can update that we could go actually we don't want it to to do anything on this we want it to be on the uh, cf quantity uh, license quantity i think it's this one here save if we do a refresh We can then see we're typing in these numbers here. The problem is, is the cost didn't update. So again, you can have multiple. So you could actually have in here as well. And this is how we do it, just to be clear. We have it triggering on multiple things. So I'm not going to say it's required. It's going to say if you do it, start running the magic. But what you end up with, and I'm doing this with you to kind of show you how we build this up, is we can then select item four. And then once we run the quantity, it will also update the total. And it means we're having this quite dynamic experience where we can jump through different parts and the calculations run. The final piece of this puzzle, how we do it, is we actually make it so the cost, price, and total cannot be modified. They're just read-only fields. And it means that we can never fat finger a number in. And it also means to me we're having consistent data in how we are procuring and selling licenses. And that is it. That is a slight little look into database lookups and how we use them.
So to reiterate, there's a few different things going on here. Um, I'm going a little bit complicated with this. I am selecting something from the products catalog. I am returning the cost and the price of that. I am then running a slight sum using SQL. And then I'm displaying that on multiple custom fields inside my instance, which makes my life a breeze. Um, that is it for my demo for today. I hope this helps somebody out. If you've got any more questions, put them in the comments below. Um, there's many ways this can be leveraged. I just thought I'd give you a quick insight into how we use it and how you could use it. And that's it for me. Have a beautiful day. I've been Connor. Speak to you soon. Bye-bye.